do. The fact that the father gives his son an inheritance early does not commence such a practice, but rather is necessary for the parable's development and climax. Remember, when you look at a parable, look at the central points of the parable and don't try to get a theological, uh, some theological truth out of every detail. Now, after a short period of time, the son not only leaves, but moves far away from the household. Verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country. Now, why he did not leave right away is not specified. We don't know. And it is not crucial for the story's development. Perhaps the delay is intended to indicate premeditation and planning on the part of the younger son. His determination toward autonomy and the rejection of his father was premeditated and deliberate. He'd been thinking about this for a long time. People don't just up and decide to leave overnight. He'd been thinking about this for a long time. The man, he had a bad heart who rejected biblical authority, and he wanted to go out and be on his own and do his own thing. That, that part of the story is quite clear. Determinations toward sinful course of action and apostasy occur first in the heart, and then are put into practice in the life. <clears throat> the gathering of everything together indicates two things. Number one, he converted his inheritance into cash to make it portable for travel. If he's going to move off to a far country, he's not going to take a herd of goats with him or some sheep. He converted it into cash. And, and two, he had no intention of returning home. When he left his father's household, his commitment to live his life as he saw fit was resolute and in his mind, final. My father can jump on a lake. I'm out of here. I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm going to have fun. I'm tired of doing chores. I'm tired of submitting to my father's authority. I'm tired of the strict biblical worldview, the strict view of the law. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have some fun. He was determined. <clears throat> now this is a clear portrait of an unregenerate man. The person who is not born again and is spiritually dead has no interest in the things of God. Therefore, he is committed to a lifestyle of autonomy, a life apart from Jehovah and his word. This is the central characteristic of every unsaved sinner. Like the son, they reject the father's care and restraint to pursue sinful pleasures. Like our first parents in their sin, they want to be their own gods, determining for themselves what is good and what is evil. Paul notes that such men reject the knowledge of God before them, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness, <clears throat> turn to idols, and as a result are given over to a debauched lifestyle. And then Paul goes on to list all sorts of sexual sins and rejection of parents' authority and all sorts of wicked things. Such men being devoid of the truth and wisdom seek happiness and fulfillment in what they regard as liberty. And that was the message of the counterculture in the 1960s, the hippie movement. I'm going to go out, I'm going to be free, I'm going to do my own thing. Freedom and liberty. But it is a false freedom. For a liberty to sin... <clears throat> is nothing more than a rejection of God's government for slavery to one's own illicit lusts. So a rejection of God's law does not bring liberty. It does not bring freedom. It brings slavery. They are happy to shun the good rule of the living God, but only find themselves bound fast in the iron shackles of sin and its dreadful consequences. Now, keep in mind the context here. This parable is speaking directly to faithless Jews who had abandoned Jehovah 
the covenants of promise and the law as a rule for a sanctified life, obviously not as a rule, as a means of, of justification, but as a rule for a justified life. They've rejected God's law. They've rejected the food laws. They've rejected the Ten Commandments. They rejected Jehovah's authority in order to go out and do their own thing. Now, obviously, this parable, however, also applies to all those raised in Christian homes who received a biblical education, who knew all the great fundamental truths of Scripture, yet who rejected the faith of their parents in order to pursue the unregenerate world's concepts of fun, happiness, and self-fulfillment. And the numbers, especially in the evangelical communities of apostate children, are shocking. They go off to college. I want to smoke pot. I want to get drunk. I want to fornicate. I want to be like the heathen around me. I want to do my own thing. All such people are truly lost and tragically have chosen their own path of destruction. <clears throat> Moreover, as noted, it characterizes all men who run away from God to a life of self-worship and hedonism. <clears throat> the essence of all sin is separation and departure from God. Men are said to remove themselves from God when they lay aside all fear of Him. And this is taught quite specifically in Psalm 73, verse 27. The gathering together of all and departing estimates on man's part the collection of all his energies and powers with a deliberate determination of getting through their help all the gratification he can out of this world. Eat, drink, and, drink and be merry. Tomorrow we die. Tune in. Turn on. Drop out. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That is the philosophy of the world. In the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, it's martinis and cigarettes. In the 1960s and 70s, it's marijuana and LSD. Things, the world teaches the same thing throughout history. All such persons openly prefer the creature to the creator. They put God out of their thoughts to indulge themselves and consequently seek deeper into worldliness and a vile life, a life of sin. <clears throat> And then second, that's the first thing. Second, the son's apostasy and hatred of the truth is reflected in an independent lifestyle. Verse 13b. And there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Now instead of acting responsibly and setting up a business, finding himself a good... Jewish believing wife, or in our day would be a good Christian wife, <clears throat> setting up a household. Instead of doing that, instead of working hard to glorify God with his capital, he squanders his wealth on sinful pleasures. The money that his father had worked so hard to earn, building up capital over the years from hard labor, the son treated with contempt. He lived the life of a rank hedonist a pleasure seeker, and he squandered the whole estate on worthless, sinful activity. The verb translated wasted means literally to scatter abroad. The adverb translated riotous, the King James, or prodigal, the New King James, means loosely or desolutely. It is the perfect word to describe a debauched, sinful, ungodly lifestyle. Now, in our time, many of us were familiar with a young man who comes into an inheritance. His parents die, and he gets a, a big sum of money. And he spends his money like a wicked fool. He goes to bars and strip clubs. He visits prostitutes. He buys cocaine and drugs. He spends his time in bars getting drunk. 
He throws lavish drinking parties with drunkenness, drug abuse, and fornication. Same thing. It's the same thing that the man in the story has done, the son, the younger son. Same thing. And then, of course, these people end up broke. 